what a difference a year makes. This is what Folsom Lake looked like last year. All those boat docks exposed. A lot of the lake basically shut down from all recreation. But now fast forward into 2022, and this is what that looks like. The boats are ready for the holiday weekend and recreation returns to Folsom Lake. Now, a lot of folks are asking, though, how can things be looking so good here at Folsom, nearing almost capacity, whereas many of our other lakes are looking low and well below average at this point. So let me show you some comparison numbers here. Uh, Shasta, our biggest reservoir at only 40% full, but again, Folsom, almost 90% of full heading into that holiday weekend. Oroville, another big water resource for us, only 55% full. So many of our averages are very low, whereas Folsom, 110% of average, but there is a very clear reason of why this is happening and it boils down to our atmospheric rivers. This year we got hit with one of the biggest atmospheric rivers to come through an exceptional one category of just one of them that came through that category five atmospheric river and it basically went right along the I-80 line through the American River Basin, which is a direct feeder to Folsom Lake. So we really benefited from some great storms coming through in uh, right around the American River Basin through the Sacramento drainage area, whereas Northern California didn't benefit, extreme Northern California for Shasta and Oroville, didn't quite benefit quite as much. Now, there's a couple of things that are going on here. First of all, let's explain what an atmospheric river is. It's our primary feature for global water cycle, and especially across the West Coast, a strong atmospheric river carries seven to 15 times the amount of water vapor in the mouth of the Mississippi River. The presence of atmospheric rivers can either lead to flood or a normal water year, but the absence of atmospheric rivers leads to drought. And that's what we've seen over the past couple of years. So we basically got one huge storm that brought us all the snow in this year and a couple of storms coming through in December and then things basically shut down. The Northern Sierra only 22% of average right now, 9% for the Central Sierra and Southern Sierra at 2% of average. Now, one of the key things here is keep in mind, we're not going to see much in the way of more snowfall coming into the Sierra, just a few snowflakes here and there. In fact, we may even get some snow showers for the Memorial Day morning uh, outlook with temperatures in the 20s and a weather system moving through, but that's not going to be enough to fill our water basins. Well, as far as the water path, what happens is we get the snow in the high country. We get to some of these warmer, drier months and everything starts to melt. Gravity is going to take it downstream. So for the American River, again, this is where those atmospheric rivers were heading right along the I-80 and Highway 50 line in that corridor here. And we benefited for the Tahoe Basin. Got some of that snow coming through the Feather River Basin for Oroville. But here's the catch on that. Remember that fire, the Dixie fire last year? Well, the black carbon from the damaged trees is sloughing up on the snow and it's causing it to melt a lot faster. So we got a big rush of water coming through and some of it even evaporating, not all of it making it into Lake Oroville. So the wildfire season last season still is having impacts on our snow melt this year. That is not the case for the American River Basin. Again, a lot of this water coming downstream filling uh, Folsom Lake and eventually we'll make it through uh, into Discovery Park where it meets up with the Sacramento River, the Sacramento River carrying water from Shasta re Reservoir and eventually out towards the Delta. So that's kind of the water path here. And again, without the presence of those big atmospheric rivers, we just take such a huge hit with our uh, dryness factor. Now, when we look at the water year 2022, this is the atmospheric river that I was talking about. It hit in October. It was category five. That's the most extreme category that we can get. And it, it was an exceptional uh, atmospheric river. The fall rain begins in October into November, but we were relatively dry in November. Remember, we've been talking about that whiplash. We went from record wetness in October all the way through November with near record dryness. And then December hit and we did really well. Now, January started off okay, but then we hit this record dryness from January, February, and March. And keep in mind, December, January, and February, that's 50% of our annual precipitation typically. When we hit record dryness for two of those months, that's not a good sign for what's ahead 
for the dry part of the year. So March and April, we got a few storms coming through. May, a few very light storms coming through. But that's when we start to hit that peak snow melt. So at this point, we're into our peak snow melt. What we see is what we get for our reservoirs. So the fact that Folsom is looking so good is obviously very good news because now our water demand hits its highest mark and that will last all the way through September.